Okay, here we're going to look at plant stems in a little bit more detail. I thought this was kind of an interesting image to kind of show here of some of the tree trunks from a different angle, showing the stems, and we're going to learn a little bit more about them, more than just trees, but how there's different types of stems depend on different types of classifications of plants. So starting with the stems in general, they often experience both primary and secondary growth. Remember, primary is growing upwards and downwards. Secondary growth is the growth in the diameter of a plant. Stems are the source of the economically important product called wood. In the primary growth of a shoot, leaves first appear as primordia. So I'm not going to quiz you on all the individual little tiny terms here, but I figure it's worth putting on a good picture kind of to describe some of those. And the leaf primordium here is a G. That's kind of off to the side here, and that's where the leaves are initiating. This is our highest rate of cell division here at E, and that's the apical meristem, which you should be familiar with. B is the ground meristem here, uh, and C is the leaf gap evident here. So just familiar to familiarize yourself with this microscopic look at a stem. A little bit more of a macroscopic view that you might be a little bit more familiar with, the stem anatomy. Nodes, this is the area where our, our leaves are originating. Internodes is the, simply the distance between two nodes. The blade, or the leaf. And the petiole, which is the supporting structure that supports the leaf or the blade. So just be familiar with the stem anatomy to be able to recognize that. We will be doing some activities where you have to identify certain um, stems and leaves. And this video might prove helpful in the future. So hypo and epicotyls. Well, the epicotyl and the hypocotyl all are in relation to the cotyledon leaves. So you can see this is clearly a dicot because there's two seed leaves. And the stem region below those two seed leaves is called the hypocotyl. Hypo meaning below or under. So hypocotyl is underneath those two cotyledons. And the epicotyl is above those two cotyledons or seed leaves in this case. So if I ask you to identify the epicotyl or something with the hypocotyl, uh, these would be the regions you'd be looking. In addition to tissue patterns and stems, we have monocotyledonous stems. So these are monocots, as we remember from our grass blades or our corn plant. So cross-section contains a more scattered approach than in dicots. I found some excellent online, some excellent microscopic images, so you can get an appreciation for what these stems actually look like in these different types of plants. So we're talking monocots, and we're talking stems. They produce no secondary vascular tissues or cork. When I say more scattered, our vascular bundles are more scattered, even though you may initially say that, yes, there's a little bit more towards the perimeter, which is true, but they are definitely more scattered when you compare to the dicots. So this is what the stem would look like in a monocot. Looking at a herbaceous dicotyledon stem. So remember, herbaceous are not going to uh, produce any for form of wood structure. So herbaceous dicotyledon stems. They have discrete vascular bundles, and they're located mainly on the perimeter. So you'll notice the pith in the middle here, and all the vascular bundles are located on the perimeter. To go back for one moment at the monocots here, notice that yes, there's a more concentration towards the perimeter, but they are scattered on the interior as well within the pith. As you see here with the herbaceous dicots, they are only in the peri perimeter of the cell, of the stem in, in these uh, cases. The cortex, the epidermis, remember that's the outer portion, and our vascular bundle. Remember, if we zoom in our vascular bundle, we notice here that we have on the top, we have our phloem, and then as we work our way down, we have our xylem there. In the middle is our vascular cambium here, producing phloem to the outside and xylem to the inside. Again, it's a pretty good images that I found online. Links are in the description. Uh, woody dicotyledonous stems, so these are dicots that are producing wood. Heartwood and sapwood are two examples. So let's get into these in a little bit more detail. Well, produces secondary xylem, which is wood. Older trees have a visually distinctive sections here. We see the heartwood is the darker wood in the center, and that's located in this region right here. The sapwood is located towards the outside. It contains still functioning xylem. We see here this lighter portion is the sapwood. The annual ring marks are lines that are between dark late wood and lighter early wood. And that's what's causing the annual rings. We can use these rings to determine a little bit of history of what this particular um, tree had gone through. You see, I took a little arrow here and just kind of pointed at one of the annual rings there. Looking at a microscopic view, 
We have the primary xylem here on the inside, the pith in the direct center, the wood region here, which is made up of the secondary xylem. Then we have the vascular cameum, again, where our phloem and xylem are being produced. This would be considered, in general, the bark region, and our phloem would be here on only the outside. I gave the example of people who go around, and particularly in areas that get a lot of snow, and don't want to cut down trees to dry them. They want to leave them standing timber. They will go around, they'll cut into the entire circumference of the tree, still leaving the tree vertical. But what they do is when they cut into that with a the saw, they're breaking all the phloem. They're eliminating all of the sugar transport. By eliminating the sugar transport, that tree will eventually die. Over time, it will dry out, and in the winter, uh, while there's snow on the ground, they can go through and cut down those trees because they're dry. If you have a wood stove, or no one that does, you don't want to freshly cut a tree down and burn it. It'll produce a lot of smoke, a lot of sap. It doesn't burn very efficiently. Having dry wood is definitely much more advantageous. And by cutting just the flow and leaving the tree standing, it's easy to find the trees in a thick snowpack. And it also dries the wood out so it burns efficiently. Now, comparison between dicots and monocot stems, I try to do a quick division here. These would be the dicots here on the left, and this would be the monocots here on the right. You can see that much more scattered approach in monocots. Dicots definitely keeping those vascular bundles towards the perimeter only, having a large central pith region. Zoomed out a little bit, so not just looking at one portion here. We see our monocots and our dicots again. Remember, those vascular bundles in both cases contain xylem to the inside and phloem to the outside. Uh, but we see the dicots organized all along the perimeter and monocots scattered throughout. To give you that in a kind of a cartoon, kind of representative image of our dicots and monocot stems, this is how they would look. I could see very much the same like the quality microscopic images that I chose to present earlier.